Egypt is, without a doubt, one of the most incredible and mysterious civilizations of all time. One of the cultures that have marked the evolution of the world as we know it, and one that continues to raise many unresolved questions, which experts are trying to unravel based on painstaking studies. From the most macabre board game in history to a set of jewelry made with outer space materials, here are the 20 strangest things recently discovered in Egypt. Number 20. Strange alien stone found in Egypt may be evidence of ancient space explosion. Standard candle supernova explosions are some of the most energetic events in the universe, occurring when a dense white dwarf star consumes another star. Now, scientists believe that they have found the first evidence on Earth of such a supernova. The claim comes after the careful study of the extraterrestrial Hepatia stone that was found in Egypt in 1996. Telltale signs, including the chemical composition and pattern of the rock, suggest that the fragments contain bits of the cloud dust and gas that surrounds a supernova. Over billions of years, that mix of dust and gas would have turned into a solid, eventually forming the main body from which Hepatia sprang sometime around the creation of our solar system. Yeah, this means this rock is not only a lot older than mankind, but also as old as our entire solar system. How cool is that? In a sense, we could say that they have caught a supernova explosion in the act, because the gas atoms from the explosion were trapped in the surrounding dust cloud, which eventually formed the main body of Hepatia. If this hypothesis is correct, the Hepatia stone would be the first tangible evidence on Earth of a standard candle supernova explosion. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the star topic. Scientists' terrifying new discovery in Egypt changes everything. They found hidden deep below the Nile River seabed dozens of ancient Egyptian statues and buildings that can only point to the fact that there was once an underwater city here. There's no doubt that the Egyptians were incredibly evolved, but this kind of engineering prowess proves that they were, in a way, more evolved than what we are now. How is it possible that they had the technology necessary to build an entire city underwater? Could the ancient Egyptians have been that much more developed than previously thought? And most importantly, if this city exists, could this mean that Atlantis is a possibility too? Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Bent Pyramid King Sneferu of the 4th Dynasty built the Bent Pyramid on a square plan measuring 188 meters on each side. The pyramid had two entrances, one on the north side and the other on the west side, the function of which is unclear. The ascending angle of the pyramid is 54 degrees, but this angle did not correspond to the square plan. If the pyramid continued at this angle, then it would have collapsed, especially since they really began to notice some cracks and began to fill them with plaster. Therefore, at a mean height of 48 meters, the angle of elevation changed to 43 degrees to save the pyramid. The total height became 101 meters. This pyramid was given three names, False, Bent, and the Southern Pyramid. After the Bent Pyramid ad mitum had collapsed, King Sneferu decided to build another pyramid. Knowing the points of weakness of the pyramid, Sneferu began to build another one at a distance of 2 kilometers to the north of the Bent Pyramid. But despite the fact that this pyramid was a failed attempt, this pyramid still retains most of its covering, which makes it a pyramid that is currently best preserved in all of Egypt and what made it known as the one that shines in the sun. Number 18. The Pharaoh Who Found the Sphinx 
The Great Sphinx of Giza is a monumental sculpture that's located on the west bank of the Nile River in the city of Giza, about 20 kilometers southwest of downtown Cairo in Egypt. Egyptologists estimate that it was carved around 2500 BC as part of the funerary complex of the king during the fourth dynasty of Egypt. The Great Sphinx was carved out of a limestone mound on the Giza Plateau. It has a height of approximately 20 meters and is 73 meters in length. The head could represent Pharaoh Khafra because it looks like him, with the body in the shape of a lion with the tail gathered on the right side. In ancient times, it was painted in vivid colors. Red for the body and the face, and the names that covered the head had yellow and blue stripes. It's not clear who built this enigmatic megalith, or why, but there's a carved tablet between the Sphinx's paws that may give us some new information. The tablet tells the story of a legend about Pharaoh Thutmose IV when he was a young prince. On a hunting expedition, the young pharaoh came across the Sphinx buried in the desert sand. Exhausted and thirsty, he decided to take a rest under its shadow. He fell asleep, and in his dream, the Sphinx came to him and told him she would make him the king of Egypt. Number 17. Scientists have just announced they found the tomb of Egyptian god Osiris next to the river Nile. Despite the fact that he would become the king of the dead in ancient Egypt and the incarnation that all the pharaohs acquired when they died, Osiris appears for the first time in documentation from the 5th dynasty, when the Great Pyramids of the Giza Plateau had already been built. And now, a joint team of Spanish and Italian archaeologists has discovered a small-scale replica of the tomb dedicated to Osiris at the Necropolis of the Nobles in Luxor. The funerary complex was found inside one of the two tombs that the Min Project mission has in concession in this area. The tomb in question has a very particular architecture dedicated to Osiris, and according to the expert statement, it is a replica of the Osirion of Abydos, the name given to the cenotaph that the Egyptian pharaoh Seti I had built in Abydos, one of the most influential cities of Upper Egypt. The particularity of this tomb is based on the fact that it hides a well that leads to other funerary chambers located 15 meters deep and that would house the bodies of the deceased who wished to pass to the afterlife under the protection of the God of the Dead. One of these funerary chambers, which is accessed from the Osiris Chapel, is decorated with drawings of demons holding knives in their hands, a symbol of protection from the deceased. Number 16. Childlike mummy contained grain shaped to represent Osiris. A group of researchers revealed information about an Egyptian mummy that, due to its size, they believed to be a child. The mummy, which is between 2,500 and 3,000 years old, was kept at the National Maritime Museum in Haifa and was taken to an Israeli hospital where a CT scan was performed. The study revealed that the supposed infant mummy is actually a sculpture of clay and grains that represents Osiris, the mythical king of ancient Egypt and the god of the dead. It's what's known as a grain mummy or wheat mummy. They contain mud and grain, and they were mummy-shaped, hence the name. The mummy had been analyzed weeks ago, along with another figure that corresponds to a bird and was identified as a falcon. These early studies yielded uncertain results, so a new analysis was done. The mummified falcon is a creature closely associated with Horus, the god of kingship and the sky. It's not known exactly how the mummies were discovered before reaching the museum. One of the theories carried out by researchers is that they were buried in a tomb, probably the tomb of a pharaoh, as an offering to the gods on behalf of the deceased. Number 15. Archaeological Find – Shipwreck That Sank 2,200 Years Ago a new discovery has brought to light the remains of a warship belonging to the Ptolemaic era, as well as the ruins of a burial area dating from the early 4th century BC, which have been found in the sunken city of Heraklion near Alexandria in Egypt. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, Mustafa Waziri, explained that the ship was going to dock in the channel that flowed along the upper side of the Temple of Amun, but it sank due to the collapse of the temple and the fall of huge blocks on it during the 2nd century BC due to a particularly 
devastating earthquake. Thus, the ship has remained in deep waters, now full of remains of temples. The remains of the ship were discovered under approximately 5 meters of solid mud, which represents the seabed mixed with the remains of the temple, using underwater excavation devices such as subsurface profiling devices. The discovery of fast ships dating from that time is very rare. Greek ships of this type were completely unknown until the discovery of the Punic ship Marsala 235 BC, which is the only example we had until now. Number 14. 2000 year old staircase inside the ancient Egyptian temple of Dendera. The temple complex at Dendera in Egypt is what you would call huge. Housing a basilica, two birth houses, a sacred lake, and several other temples and shrines within its wall, this is one of the most spectacular sites in the entire country. Heck, maybe even in the whole world. But what's most interesting about this place isn't just its sheer size, which is quite impressive per se, but the fact that the structures present here all date from an assortment of different Egyptian eras, with some monuments being from the Middle Kingdom them, others from the Ptolemaic era, and some even from the period of Roman provincial rule. You can imagine the value this complex has for our understanding of Egyptian history and culture. Some of these structures date back to around 2250 BCE, but it's vastly agreed upon that the standing structures mostly date from the Ptolemaic era forward. It's believed that construction of the Mentuhotep II monument began in 1995 BCE, the oldest existing structure when the site was rediscovered. This monument has since been moved to Cairo. The oldest structure currently there is from Nectanebo II, built in 345 BCE. All that said, it may be more accurate to say the structure as we know it today began in 54 BCE when they started the construction of the Temple of Hathor, the most prominent structure at the Dendera complex. Number 13. Wooden Toe Proves Ancient Egyptians' New Prosthetics Scientists have discovered in Egypt an artificial big toe on the foot of a mummy that would be the oldest functional prosthesis in the world. The toe, made of leather and wood, helped its owner walk like an Egyptian. Get it? The scientific team hopes to show that the artificial big toe of the right foot predates the prosthesis of an artificial leg dating from 300 BC, the oldest known so far by several centuries. That leg had been made of bronze and was deposited at the Royal College of Surgeons in London. It was destroyed by German bombs during World War II. These two toes date from between 1000 and 600 BC, and if we can show that one or both were functional, we will have pushed back the birth of prosthetic medicine by around 700 hundred years. This prosthetic toe was probably completely functional because it's articulated and shows no sign of wear. Also, it's still attached to the foot of the mummy, who was a woman who died when she was between 50 and 60 years old, and the amputation site shows signs of having healed normally. Scientists are now looking for people with a prosthetic toe to try and compare the functionality of modern limbs with ancient Egyptian ones and try and make a replica of the prosthetic found in the mummy. Number 12. Valley of the Golden Mummies Coinciding with the worldwide release of the film The Mummy in 1999, the Egyptian authorities announced the discovery of the Baharia Oasis, which they called the Valley of the Golden Mummies, a huge necropolis of six square kilometers in whose galleries it's estimated that more than 10,000 mummies from the Greco-Roman era are resting. The Valley of the Golden Mummies is located in the heart of the Baharia Oasis in the Libyan desert of Egypt, about 500 kilometers west of the capital city of Cairo. Many of the mummies found at this site were covered with golden cardboard, a detail that ended up giving the cemetery its name. This is the largest cemetery of the ancient world, not only from Egypt, but from any other place on the planet. The possibility isn't strange at all if we think that this oasis in ancient times housed more than 30,000 souls. All this means, from an archaeological point of view, is that this site will give work to several generations of archaeologists. The one listed as Tomb 54 is perhaps the most popular of all the Bahariya. The best mummies come from it. Over the centuries, the roof of the tomb sank, covering the entire area with lots of sand. This catastrophe had further facilitated the conservation of the bodies in enviable conditions. Sand has been shown to be the best preservative there is. Number 11. 
cosmic ray scans to explore hidden secrets of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Archaeologists, physicists, and mathematicians came together to answer the great question that surrounds the colossal monument dedicated to Cheops. Armed with advanced technology, the group of scientists plan to discover the secrets of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the most outstanding of the 118 found in Egypt. For that, they plan to use nothing less than a cosmic ray scanner that will allow them to virtually penetrate inside the structure, discovering its secrets and understanding how, and maybe why, it was built. The task developed by this group of specialists is challenging. They'll focus especially on two empty spaces inside the Pyramid of Cheops, the largest of the three pyramids of Giza, also known as the Great Pyramid. They want to reveal the entire unknown world that lies behind its grandiose 481-foot-tall structure. They seek to use a scanner of cosmic rays from muons, unstable particles with a charge similar to electrons, which would allow them to carefully examine the interior of the recesses. Muons are created when highly charged particles collide with the Earth's atmosphere. As a result, the muons that emerge from the impact are more powerful than X-rays. These particles will generate 3D images, allowing the visualization of spaces in which there's some difficulty of access. Number 10. Book of the Dead for the ancient Egyptians, death was not the end of existence, but a stop along the way, like a threshold that could be successfully crossed if the appropriate means were available. The mummification of the bodies, the objects and amulets deposited next to the deceased, or the architecture and decoration of the tombs were some of the instruments that could allow the Egyptians to overcome the lethargy of death. Another of these magical means was the word, pronounced during burial and offering rituals, or written in the form of spells and incantations. In this last example, the collection of the spells that make up the so-called Book of the Dead stands out. We know it by that name because that is how it was baptized in the 19th century by the German Egyptologist K. R. Lepsius. But its original title could be translated as The Chapters of Coming Forth by Day, which reveals its basic function, to allow its owner to continue living in the afterlife, to leave his grave and live again in the earth, or to join the sun on its daily journey through the sky. To do this, in addition to defeating death, the deceased had to avoid avoid the dangers that could lie in wait for him on his way to the underworld, the region inhabited by the dead. Number 9. Schist Disk the Schist Disc was found in the tomb of the Prince Sabu, although there are different opinions as to whether he was a prince or a nomarch. His tomb was discovered in 1936 in the Saqqara Architectural Complex by Brian Walter Emery, one of the most famous Egyptologists of the 20th century. The disc in question is formed of metamorphic limonite and not shale as previously thought, and is considered a very laborious mineral to carve. It has an opening in the center and is actually shaped like a helix. It should be noted that the disc was found in several pieces and that the object today, as we see it in the Cairo Museum, is a reconstruction. So the original may not have been 100% like this, but whatever its shape may have been, nobody has the slightest idea of what it is. Some people think that it was solely an ornamental piece. Others, on the other hand, due to its central hole, say that it could be a wheel. But we must not forget that the wheel didn't reach Egypt until the invasion of the Hyksos at the end of the Middle Kingdom in the year 1640 BC. Number 8. Experts Discover Huge Hidden Tomb Below Water Egyptian archaeologists were absolutely baffled after investigating down a 20-foot deep pit completely full of water and discovering a mysterious underwater opening that led to what they are saying is the most important and largest discovery in over a hundred years. Subsequently, Egyptian authorities confirmed they had uncovered a trove of 30 ancient wooden coffins in Luxor, with several mummies still perfectly intact. The historical event took place in Jebel el Silsila, also known as the chain of mountains, which is located 40 miles north of the town of Aswan in Upper Egypt. When we think of ancient Egypt and its grandiosity, we tend to often limit ourselves to its magnificent and powerful kings and queens and its almighty gods. But let's not forget that millions of hard-working people worked tirelessly to make ancient Egypt what it was. These people built Egypt into one of the greatest civilizations of the ancient world, and they must be remembered with the respect they deserve. Here in Jebel el Silsila, over 
there are the remains of ancient Egypt's biggest ever stone quarries, and nearby are the tombs of some of the people that worked in those quarries some 3,500 years ago. And some of them are the ones that have just been discovered underwater despite having been buried in a desert. Number 7. Egyptian Canopic Jars the canopic vessel is known as the container that was used during ancient Egypt to deposit the viscera of the dead, but not before having gone through a process of washing and embalming. Thank goodness. The purpose of the process was to keep intact the image of unity that the body should have. Subsequently, the vessels were placed in a wooden box, which during courtship was moved on a kind of sled. The name comes from the Greek. It is said that it was in a city with the same name that the pilot of Menelaus' ship met his death. It's also said that in the city of Canopus, located near Alexandria, was the place where the god Osiris was represented in the shape of a vessel, although with a human head. During the Egyptian period, there were four different types of canopic vessels that in turn came to represent the sons of Horus, divinities that were believed to be destined to protect their contents from possible destruction. In turn, each of these canopic vessels was under the protection of a goddess, Isis, Nephthys, Selkis, and Night, whose mission was to orient the organs towards the four cardinal points with the following arrangement, the liver to the south, the lungs to the north, the intestines to the west, and the stomach to the east. Number 6. Ancient Egypt is far older than they say. There are countless objects that destabilize orthodox archaeologists. One of them is the Nubian ostrich egg. It is currently exhibited in the Nubian Museum. Nubia is the region south of Egypt and north of Sudan. Its population settles along the Nile Valley between the first and sixth cataracts of the Nile. In 1907, the British archaeologist Cecil Malaby Firth, during archaeological excavations in an ancient Nubian cemetery, found it in a tomb with the remains of an unknown man accompanied by his trousseau. One of the trousseau's items was an ostrich egg with strange and yet very familiar symbols. On one side of the egg, you can see the drawing of an ostrich, and on the other side, you can see clearly drawn three pyramidal shapes with something to its right wriggling, the three pyramids of Giza and the Nile River, perhaps. The human remains seem to belong to the so-called Nagata I culture, and that was at least 7,000 years ago. Seeing as the pyramids of Giza are 4,500 years old, this simply doesn't doesn't add up. Could it be that our understanding of ancient Egypt is so wrong? Could we be looking at 7,000-year-old structures that somehow survived the cruel desert conditions? Number 5. Why do so many Egyptian statues have broken noses? Experts have found a strange pattern in Egyptian statues. Many of them have broken noses, and it's no coincidence. There is a reason for this mutilation. The Egyptians can boast of being one of the civilizations that best worked stone, being true artists when it comes to making all kinds of figures, regardless of their size. Therefore, it was difficult to understand that the noses of their different sizes were almost always broken. But now, the mystery seems to have been solved. A dark and sinister force is what has carried out this type of mutilation. The consistency of the patterns where the damage is found on the sculptures suggests that it has a utility, which is none other than to deactivate the force of an image. Or put another way, the Egyptians understood that the representations of their deities had power, so the way to end their abilities was none other than to break their nose, the way they breathe and initiates and sustains life. It was a figurative way of taking life from something inanimate or taking away its power. In fights between clans, changes of power, or even in grave robberies, it became a common practice. And not only regarding sculptures, this pattern has been repeated in engravings or paintings. To avoid a hypothetical punishment by these deities, the person in charge of doing evil killed the figure, for lack of a better word. Number 4. Bizarre Structure Found in Egyptian Desert This one's for all the UFO hunters out there. A mysterious structure has recently been discovered in the Egyptian desert, which is big enough to be visible on Google Maps and has sparked a wave of speculation on the internet. The complex, which sits on top of barren landscape to the east of the capital city of Cairo, features two long, pointed buildings which are surrounded by circles. One look at this thing and you know this is the furthest from the traditional ancient Egyptian style. This structure has a futuristic design, which has prompted a range 
range of suggestions as to what it is, and most importantly, who built it. As you can imagine, there are hundreds of people that strongly and passionately believe this is the work of an extraterrestrial civilization, and that the government is trying to cover it up. And quite honestly, this building looks like something straight out of Tatooine. But some other people have pointed out that the mysterious building is right next to the highway. So in theory, how secret could it really be? Number 3. Sacred Baboons Incarnation of the God of Wisdom and Counselors of the Sun God This is how the ancient Egyptians saw baboons, and consequently, they were sacred to them. These primates were not only mummified, but were considered authentic gods. The baboon was not the only animal revered by the Egyptians. They also worshipped the jackal or the falcon, but the choice of baboons is surprising. First, because most of the people who live near these animals consider them to be dangerous vermin. In fact, in the arts and crafts of sub-Saharan Africa where they live, they are not represented. And secondly, it is the only animal in the pantheon of pharaohs that is not native to Egypt. A new study on these enigmatic mummies has shed light on another enigma, the probable location of the legendary kingdom of Punt. Comparing the strontium present in two mummies with that of baboons living in different African regions, they concluded that the mummified mummies were born in the region south of the Red Sea, present-day Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, and Somalia. And it confirms the amazing navigation ability of the Egyptians 2,000 years before Christ. That the baboons were imported from the other end of the Red Sea implies that they were capable of traveling more than 1,300 kilometers round trip in open boats without keels or rudders. Number 2. The Board Game of Death in the search for the most extreme ritual, the ancient Egyptians were able to transform even the simplest board games of everyday life into key tests to cross the threshold into the afterlife, a kind of initiation path that turned the passage of the underworld into an entertaining game. It was called Senate. As we know from some scholarly texts, board games were wildly popular in ancient Egypt, but Senate was the most popular game of all. However, the name already gives us a first clue. Senate means to pass or to be guided by. With this suggestive name, we are alluding to the very dynamics of the game. Go through its 30 squares and avoid setbacks and difficulties that may arise. It was during the New Kingdom, 1400 BC, when Senate acquired that ritual and initiatory meaning that characterized it for the rest of its history. Throughout this period, this board game became more of a mortuary artifact than anything else, acquiring the symbolism of the path that the deceased had to take on the way to the afterlife. Number 1. Meteorite Jewelry in 1911, a 5,000-year-old burial ground was found in El Gerzi, northern Egypt. One of the tombs stood out for the luxury and ostentation of the objects it kept. Researchers discovered that some of the objects in that tomb are made of meteorite iron. The scientists passed nine beads through beams of neutrons and gamma rays, which showed that the materials had a high concentration of nickel, cobalt, phosphorus, and germanium. Above all, this last element proves that the pieces were forged with meteorite iron. These small beads, just 2 centimeters long and 1.3 inches in diameter, are the oldest known wrought iron artifacts. The discovery is great, not only because of the type of material used, but because it proves that 2,000 years before the forging of common iron, Egyptian craftsmen were already working with meteorite iron. Knowledge of the manufacture of meteorite iron was essential to the development of ironwork. As you can see, ancient Egypt is a never-ending source of fascinating facts that keep messing with our understanding of history. Out of all the interesting discoveries in this video, which one do you think is the most important? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!